Hello, everyone, and welcome to a webinar presentation by NetApp, how to calculate return on investment for your remote access tools. Thank you for joining us this morning or afternoon or evening from wherever in the world you're joining us. We, we appreciate your attendance. Um, as the title indicates, we're going to be talking about ROI today. Um, but before we jump into the subject, let me introduce myself. My name is Sam Heine. I'm the Director of Product Management uh, for NetApp. I've been with the company for going on 14 years. And during that time, I've, I've really had the privilege to chat with some of the largest organizations in the world about remote access and remote control needs. And at NetApp, we work with almost a quarter of the world's largest retailers. And in the financial industry, almost half of the largest banks in the world. Our worldwide headquarters is over in Europe, um, but we do work with about half of the Fortune 100 in the US, which is where I am located. And almost 60% of the largest companies in Europe, according to the Financial Times, um, where our worldwide headquarters is just outside of Copenhagen, Denmark. Today, <clears throat> you know, as, as we discuss this topic, before we jump into the specifics, I really wanted to indicate a little bit about the companies that are presenting. Um, not only I will be on the call, um, but I'm, I'm joined with um, one of our partners to talk about, you know, three different key aspects of NetApp Remote Control, the product that, that we manage, but also um, the partnership that we've developed with Toshiba's global commerce uh, platform. And NetApp really focuses on the security of our solutions, the flexibility of our software. And it's that combination of security and flexibility that drives efficiency for organizations. And we've been really thrilled to work for the past several years uh, with Toshiba um, because of their expertise in uh, point of sale and within the retail marketplace. So let me introduce um, my co-presenter today, uh, Barry Cox. And Barry, do you wanna tell the audience a little about yourself? Yeah, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> my name is Barry Cox. I uh, work for Toshiba Global Commerce Solutions. I've been with the company about 22 years. Um, I am responsible for our partnerships um, and our services-based solutions. Um, so our operating systems, our um, remote management tools, and the partnership with NetOp. So, you know, to sort of complement what Sam has been saying, you know, we, I've also been fortunate to work with some of the, some of the largest retailers in the world um, across numerous geographies as well. Um, our partnership with NetOp is, is very much complemented on the strengths of both businesses. And I'll talk to that in a, a few minutes. You know, we've got uh, extensive install base, um, some fantastic partners, and I think the the, the solution and um, the partnership with NetOp really does complement both businesses. To talk to the partnership in, in particular, so <clears throat> why does Toshiba partner with NetOp? Why do we believe that the, the combined solution really complements our, our customers, our partners um, across across the globe, not just regionally? Um, when I think about the value proposition that Toshiba provides, you know, we we strive for uh, hardware to have the highest availability. We know it has to be reliable, and the longevity has to be there. And you know, if you looked at six key points that matter to to all of our customers, they focus around security, flexibility, and efficiency. So having a product that's highly available but very secure, with the maximum reliability. And the flexibility is, uh, you know, is is a challenge to others. But the partnership that we've we've crafted together and the way we've integrated our solutions really sort of drives to that efficiency point. So while driving a highly reliable solution, we need, you know, we need it to be efficient. We need to be easy to use, but also focused on the security. Thanks, Barry. So. We the rest of this presentation is really gonna be more of a, a dialogue or a conversation between Barry and I, as we talk a little bit about this ROI formula and what are the real world implications of using a remote access and a remote control tool uh, within a retail environment. Specifically, um, we're looking at a hypothetical example of using remote access on point of sale devices. And from my conversations with large retailers, um, there's a, a large percentage of retail organizations that have chosen 
not to deploy. So they, they have excluded remote control and remote access solutions from point of sale, primarily for security reasons. So in, in a lot of different environments, this ROI, ROI formula is, is going to be, you know, there's no solution there today. And so we can look at the, the standard kind of business school formula of, let's talk about what can you gain by putting in this new technology. Um, I want to say new, it, it's certainly not new technology in the greater kind of IT world, but within point of sale, it's often a, a new technology that's being introduced. Um, so you take the gain that you get, you minus, you know, you subtract the cost of that investment, you divide it by the cost, and that's that's your formula. The, the hypothetical that we're doing today is really focused on um, a retail environment. Uh, think of a, a, a large grocery store with over a thousand uh, point of sale devices. And based on those numbers, we'll start showing you our calculations. But the formula and what we are presenting really applies to whether you have five point of sale devices in a small uh, a small store or you know 500,000 if you're one of the largest retailers in the world. So this formula applies and it's really just about checking out the numbers and plugging in your own formula into this data set. And the last thing I'll say is that when you're looking at calculating the gain or when you're looking at calculating this, we find that not only are there retailers and uh, stores and organizations that have not deployed a remote control solution, but oftentimes they're looking to change their remote control solution. Or if you're in the position of trying to assess whether or not it makes sense to change vendors, the same sort of formula can apply. Um, the inputs are gonna be a little different and, and we'll try to discuss those. Um, but let me drag Barry back into this conversation, you know, because when we start looking at using uh, NetApp remote control specifically, but really any remote access tool, when you introduce that into a point of sale environment, one of the first things that we find is a, a significant reduction in the diagnosis time of incidents. So it's your, your help desk or your service desk being able to figure out what's going on when something's wrong. Um, and I wanted to get Barry's impression and some some kind of real world boots on the street sort of information about how that looks. Um, so Barry, what, what are your thoughts on incident reduction time um, in, in kind of calculating this game? Yeah, I, I think you touch on a, <clears throat> a really valid point for this, Sam. I mean, when I think about incident time reduction, it's, it's about empowering people with the, the right information before you make a decision. And, you know, that can be, you know, call reductions. You know, if I can fix it remotely, I don't need to send an engineer or I don't need feet on the street or people in stores to fix that. Um, it also abides to, you know, being able to diagnose a problem. I mean, some of the problems are not easily spotted. They're certainly not sometimes identifiable through log files or some of the background information. So to be able to walk through that same experience as, as being in front of that point of sale or the self-checkout lane is, is really key. I think I'd add to it that, you know, when I think about support in general, you know, the one of the one of the strong benefits I see from the NetOp solution is the ability to collaborate as well. So being able to have many minds look at a problem at the same time is is really sort of key and uh, and sort of helps to, to to reduce that incident diagnosis time. Um, I think, you know, touching back, you know, on, on the collaboration piece. You know, many of our customers have got very complex environments with different parties involved. So having a collaborative approach with different, you know, skill sets and, and different, uh, you know, people at the same time to, to help resolve that problem quicker is, is certainly been a benefit. And I see that across, you know, um, from our business partners to our direct customers and even our own labs and development teams uh, are using the same tools where, you know, in the current climate where we can't put um, people directly in front of product and uh, and directly collaborate next to each other. These have been a real, you know, the partnership and the, uh, and the solution from NetOp and the way we've integrated has been really key to sort of reducing our costs in that respect. Great. So, I, you know, I was thinking through just as you were talking, um, you'd mentioned something about self-checkout and it, it reminded me of a story I heard during one of my customer interviews. And this is a a large grocer and you know when when you're looking at self checkout lanes in particular or really a lot of retail environments um, it, having a phone next to the um, 
to the, the register um, is oftentimes just not feasible. It, it, it's not there. And if there are service requests or if there's a problem in a lane, how does that get communicated? And how long does it take to bring the lane down, communicate the message, have someone diagnose the issue, then potentially send a truck out on site to, um, to, to fix the issue? All of these things start to factor in um, to the cost of running your shop and, and the cost of running your store. And the story that really, really got me was a, a support tech saying that, you know, they would ask the cashier to use their personal cell phone, walk over to the self-checkout lane and tell them what was happening on the screen. But if you have a good remote control tool, if you've got remote access and the ability to view that screen, you can diagnose what's going on without relying on a, a personal cell phone and, a, and someone walking around the store. And you can immediately diagnose the problem, potentially fix the issue right there remotely without having to roll a truck to the store. And if you do need to roll someone to the store, you can talk through that person, what you're seeing and provide additional collaboration as Barry said. So these percentages that you're looking at, they really reflect dollars saved, right? I can decrease the number of minutes in my uh, diagnosis from my help desk. I can reduce the number of truck rolls to the store, saving a lot of money. And if I do have to roll someone out there, that 20% improvement in effectiveness means that they're going to be on site for less time. I'm going to spend less in time and materials for any of those on site service technicians. So we, we really want people to focus in, in the calculation here on dollars saved. And the return on your investment is you're going to save a bunch of money just by allowing this to happen. And I think, I think I'd add to that um, slightly, Sam, as well. I mean, what, one of the uh, one of the things we've been uh, using the tool for as well is we've been leveraging the the ability to record that session to add to our knowledge database. So when we're thinking about you know resolving a problem that's that's inside today, it actually adds um, you know it actually builds out that that knowledge database that we we hopped ourselves. So should the next person come across the problem, they can quickly relate to you know what the end user is seeing as well. So you know touching on what you said about recording and viewing that user user experience. Great. Well, let's let's put some some dollars and cents to that, right? So, in our hypothetical example, we've got a thousand point of sale devices, and what we are saying, um, and again, you can use your own numbers here, but the formula is to to calculate your cost avoidance. Um, if I if I add up the amount of um, truck rolls that I'm running, if I can save nine percent of those, if I can reduce my diagnosis time, if I can increase my uh, service trip effectiveness. We think, you know, based on just some average numbers from our interviews mm -hmm. uh, with customers, as well as data that we're pulling, that is is public from again a variety of different studies, you can save as much as twenty five thousand dollars over twenty five thousand dollars a year. Business agility is really what do you do with that regained time? So if you know, as Barry said, you've got more people collaborating, and so they're more effective. If you've got um, a reduction in the amount of time it takes to solve a problem you're recapturing that time for your employees. And so they, they now have more time to be productive, effective and efficient in your organization. And I look at this and I kind of think of that first line of cost avoidance is as hard money, right? That is that is money in your pocket. The business agility, it's it's a little, it's kind of soft money, right? It's, it's definitely going to be a savings, but it's based on how much more efficient and more productive you are. And then we get to risk mitigation. and. Risk mitigation is, is tricky uh, because if you look at the environment that we live in today, we know if that you're a retailer, regardless of you are a small mom and pop shop or a tier one retailer with global coverage, you're going to be in the sights of hackers, criminals, um, and, and bad actors. And there have been just a ton of studies over the last several years. Um, and the one that I'm referencing in, in my calculations is from IBM and the Poneman Institute that said, you know, you're, the percentage of you being attacked in any given year is greater than 10%. So we know that you know there's a really good chance that you will be attacked over a, a three-year period. And with NetApp Remote Control in place and, and this solution that I'm talking to, we're not the only security that you'll put in place. But remote access is a significant threat vector that is targeted by these hackers. So if we can just reduce your risk by 1%, just a simple 1% risk mitigation, 
you can save literally tens of thousands of dollars in a potential breach. Now, again, this is when I talk about hard money and soft money, this is, this is the softest. It's kind of like insurance, right? You don't want it. No one wants to pay for it. But when you need it, boy, do you need it. And risk mitigation and security software is similar. If you put it in place, you avoid problems. You don't have to spend money down the road. But even if you take this out, look at that, look at that number. You're going to save over $25,000 a year just in not sending trucks to a store, just in getting more efficiencies you know, from your organization. And, and Barry, I know that from, from your experiences and where you sit in Toshiba, that you also are, are pretty heavily invested in the security landscape. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping you can talk to us a little bit about how you've seen retailers react to putting uh, remote access and remote control on their point of sale devices. Yeah, indeed. I think, Sam, you touched on it. I mean, whenever you open a uh, an entrance to a retailer, if you will, via communications, it's it's top of thought. You know, it's, it's the one thing that, that comes straight into the conversation, is it secure? Um, you know, we build uh, our own operating system to be highly secure and everything that we layer on top has to be the same. And that's a, that's a key message that we, we receive from the retailers every single time, which is, you know, I'd love the I'd love a solution, but it has to be secure. I want to be in control, and you know the uh, the, the granularity of this the security solution part of of, of, of the solution from Letop is, is key to that. You know, so different. You know, you've got different parties with different um, vested interest um, or different roles within within our customers' estates. So the access rights have to be you know, relevant and appropriate to them as well. So having that granular control and the focus on security is, is number one top of four. Um, but before I forget, um, what is suddenly top of thought for me is the, the fact that there may be questions out there in the audience. Uh, and I failed to mention at the beginning of this call um, that there is technology embedded in this presentation to let you ask those questions. Barry and I will stick around um, when we're done speaking to answer any questions that you may have. So if you look, I think it is, it's either at the bottom or the right-hand side of your screen, you should see a little questions tab that allows you to, to write questions down. So please, if, if you have any questions about what we've been talking about so far, um, put them into the system and, and we'll address those here in just a moment. Um, but Barry, I, I appreciate the feedback. And I, I think if we look at the, you know, kind of the, totals here, that total gain, it, it's pretty significant. And when we put that into our calculations, you know, it it gets compared against the cost of your investment. And with NetApp Remote Control, you know, we've been we've we've been in the enviable position, you know, like a lot of different software providers, of of developing new software, new technologies, trying to stay up with with what's going on in the marketplace. But unlike some of our competitors, and unlike some of the other things that we're seeing in the industry, we've actually had an opportunity to reduce costs. And we've been working with Toshiba to make sure that this solution, as it gets deployed, is, is cost effective, is reasonable, and is affordable for organizations large and, so, large and small. And when you look at the year one cost of investment for NetOp Remote Control, it's around for, again, a thousand devices. You know, and these are approximate numbers around 23 thousand dollars. Now that includes all of the administrative overhead, um, the people that it takes to deploy the software. We factored in uh, professional services to help get you up and running and onboarded with the solution. So the year one expense is the highest, and then it drops significantly in year two and year three as you're just running that software as a tool that really helps your organization be more efficient. And if you're using Toshiba hardware, um, if this is installed on a Toshiba, you know, hardware and software platform, again, what you'll see in the year one, year two, three, as this solution rolls into the future, the costs get lower and lower every year just because of the way that that equipment and the way those services are provided. So it's a it's a fantastic way to, you know, save a little bit of money and keep a little bit of your costs lower because when we look at that final calculation, what do you have? You have a huge gain from investment with a minimal cost um, and 549%. So 
we really want to encourage customers to think through, you know, how do I deploy this software? How can I get into a proof of concept? How can I validate and verify this ROI for my organization? And I can, I can speak for NetOp that, you know, we're here to help you figure that out. And Barry, let me, let me kind of turn this over to you for a minute. You had mentioned at the beginning that you work with the Toshiba Services Organization. What are the tools? How do you encourage organizations to, to validate these numbers and to, to try and jump into this on their own? Yes, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fair point. So, you know, going back to your um, the calculation, Sam, and the way we kind of show that, I mean, a lot of people focus on the upfront investment, um, which is a fair point. It's, 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 the, it's the cost of deploying a solution, but it's then the long-term manageability of the solution. So we've gone, you know, we've worked very heavily with NetOp to integrate the products within our, our, our operating system, for example, to make that deployment easier. You know, so sometimes you can have the best product in the world, but it's incredibly difficult to deploy and then the management of that. So, you know, thereafter. So, you know, our approach has been to, to make it easier, but not negate any of the value proposition. You know, it, it needs to be easy, but it still needs to be secure. So we don't, you know, in the process of, of kind of um, enabling our, our customers to use the product, we, we've, we, you know, we've, we've strived in. Um, embedding within it, making it easier to distribute across those states, make the manageability and the upgrades a, a lot easier. Um, in terms of use cases, you know, we've we've got um, lots of initiatives around, um, you know, trials and uh, enablement for our customers as well, because you know, trying to figure out the the exact model that make, make, that matches the individual customer. Every customer is different, so we've been looking at. You know the, the the different use cases. We see some use for security, for example. You know, how do I marry the two where I've got cameras on my lanes and I want to manage the uh, the activity on the screens, um, the 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 labs and the setups. You know, the background to to all of our customers' operations as well. How do we make those more efficient? So we've we, you know we've extended um, certain elements of our solution to be complementary within within the metal package. Well, great. So I think, again, you know, when, when we look through these slides and when we look through this kind of framework, um, this is how you calculate the ROI. And the last point that I'll make is, is really that we, we acknowledge, we recognize that every retailer is different. Um, and based on your size, your industry, your region, it, there are going to be tons of differences in the numbers and the inputs that you'll put into this formula. But one thing remains the same, and there's one thing that we we know that you can count on. Um, investing in NetApp Remote Control software, investing in Toshiba hardware and software is really going to provide you the security, the efficiency your business needs. Um, we are here to help you increase your return on investment, whether you are transitioning from an existing vendor um, or if you are putting remote control software into your lanes and into your point of sale devices for the first time. Um, so again, getting back to that, that key, those core points of our value uh, proposition, security, flexibility, efficiency, coupled with uh, reliability and um, and what were the other barriers? I'm, you know, now I'm freezing up as I <laughs> There you go. Reliability, availability, and longevity. Absolutely. So it's those six cores. I think, um, again, are really going to be valuable for any organization, um, and that's and that's why we're here today. So thank you for joining us. I, I did mention that we wanted to reserve some time. We're coming up on uh, the end of this session, which was scheduled for for a half of hour. Had about five or some questions. I see that there is one question so far from the audience. So let me encourage everyone. Um, if you have questions, please put them into the put them into the system, and we will um, and we'll do our best to answer those. It looks like this first question is for me. Um, it says, "How does NetOp help with third party risks?" Um, which is a great question because I think you know it. Most of the retailers that I work with um, will have a, a small IT team. I mean, if they're a large um, kind of tier one retailer, they're definitely going to have a, a, a service desk and, a, and an IT team that helps with their stores, but they always rely on third parties to help manage their software, help manage their hardware, help manage um, the different components of their store. And with NetApp Remote Control specifically, 
you have the ability to manage that third party risk in a variety of different ways. We offer incredibly granular access controls and authorization and kind of authentication options. Um, and it's that access control, authentication and authorization that helps you manage risk. And to break those down just a little bit, you can put layer upon layer of security controls in so that only certain people can access certain devices, right? I want to uh, restrict access to a specific IP. I can restrict access to a specific time of day. I can restrict access to a specific geography, right? So I can get very detailed on where people are coming from. Then with NetOp Remote Control, we can use authentication options, including multi-factor authentication. And it can use the existing multi-factor authentication that you may have deployed, or NetApp has a, um, a, a, a native MFA option that we can bring with us to, to give you those capabilities. Those multiple factors of authentication are necessary if you wanna be PCI compliant, if you are looking at devices that are within a PCI zone um, or that have you know, personally identifiable information on them. And then finally, you limit access, you authenticate the individual, there's the authorization of that user on the equipment, again, really fine-grained controls that deliver specific permissions so that you can have roles designed and defined for your organization so that one group of individuals has a lot of rights, a smaller group of individuals has, has less rights. So again, lots of different options, lots of different control mechanisms to really mitigate and manage that third-party risk. Uh, let me see if there are any other questions. Um, specifically, any questions for uh, for Barry on the Toshiba side? Let's. We'll just wait for just a second. You know, as I'm as I'm waiting for those questions to come in, let me also say that um, this platform that we're using for this webinar does give you the option to rate our performance um, and. You know, whether you liked us or didn't, we really want to know what your thoughts are about today's presentation. So please take a minute and rate this presentation and provide a little bit of feedback to let me and Barry know, um, let the, the NetApp and the Toshiba marketing teams know, was this a subject that, that makes sense for you? Is it something that provided value to you um, in the audience? We'd love to hear that. All right. I do have one more question. Um, and, and Barry, let me, you know, we can both talk about this one mm -hmm. a little bit. It's what happens if you lose connection totally to your POS system? Can NetApp Remote Control reboot or control a system that is completely off? Um, you know, catastrophic failures in um, in a, a point of sale environment are are scary. <laughs> you know, um, unfortunately, they they have been known to happen. Um, but part of what Toshiba does with their availability as a as a focus is to ensure that. I, I can't remember the last stat I saw, Barry, was something like 99.999. I mean, it was just a ridiculous number of nines in terms of your uptime and availability. T talk to me a little bit about maintaining availability of your systems. Yeah, so I think this is where this complements. Um, I mean, this is, a, this is a good example. So if I talk to our systems management tools, our systems management tools that, um, that we provide, they focus on monitoring those devices. <clears throat> They're constantly checking, is the device live? Is it healthy? Is it uptime? You know, is it performing as it should? The benefit with the, with the two solutions is we have a very informative base, so it will tell us everything that's wrong. NetApp gives us that ability to then interact with that endpoint device to put it right. So, you know, to, to specifically to, to, to the question, um, you know, a lot of our, um, our operating systems and uh, our devices out there today have a plethora of kind of function built in, like vPro, for example, and Wake on LAN, and some various other tools that kind of uh, tallied into that. And rebooting the product um, or bringing that lane back up is obviously paramount to the, to the customers, but it's also making sure that when it does come up, it's, uh, it's operating as, as you'd expect. So having eyes on screen, well, the ability to make sure and kind of validate for yourself remotely that the lane is up and running is, is really key. So we 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 do use the complement of both our own and, and NetOp in, in those sort of situations. And that helps us reduce that um, that diagnostic time that we've talked about earlier as well. So um, 
yeah, I mean, hopefully that, that kind of talks to, 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 to that point a little bit. Um, you know, the, the other thing we get with it, with, with the benefit of the both is, is, um, is, you know, issues with when the system's starting up as well. I mean, it might be a particular, you know, corruption in driver or, um, you know, some soft issue. Uh, and again, you know, having the two married together, a good systems management tool and a, and a, a excellent, um, you know, remote control solution really complements that, that situation. Thanks, Barry. And, and you know, speaking of complementary technologies, I know that one of the, again, one of the nice things uh, between the partnership between NetApp and Toshiba is also that both of us um, have a partnership with Intel. And uh, Barry mentioned a little bit about vPro, their AMT technology. You know, they, in a lot of the Toshiba hardware, that hardware is AMT or vPro enabled. Um, and NetApp can be integrated directly with vPro so that from the NetApp console, you can create or access a vPro session. And that means even if the operating system is failing, right? So it, if you want to get down to almost bare metal status with Intel's AMT, their vPro technology, you can re-image a total machine. So again, it gives you a remote access tool that previously would be unheard of. It's completely out of band technology to allow you to to access a machine that's completely failed. So in the worst of worst examples, you still have remote technology that's gonna make you more efficient and, and more productive. And that's the name of the game. Just keep your, keep your organization um, running, keep your lanes open. If something happens, get them back in operational and productive as fast as possible. So thanks for the question. Um, hopefully that answered it. Um, I see. I see one final question, and we are we are just about running out of time. We're a little bit over right now, um, and that's: Will there be a replay available? Um, and the answer is yes. So if you've tuned into this, um, this entire session is being recorded. Um, you can go back and watch and listen uh, to Barry and I as many times as you want, um, or share this uh, presentation with other people in your organization um, so that they have access to this information. So let me say, uh, Barry, thank you for joining me today. I really do appreciate your insights, uh, your feedback, and, and, your, um, and your help with today's presentation. And thank you to everyone in the audience for joining us. Um, we appreciate your time, and we look forward to working with you in the future. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for your time, everyone.